So I've put my two washes down. Um, I did null and oil um, on kind of all the recesses in the coats. And then I did a little bit of Agrax Earth Shake just on um, like the mask where the Mournfang Brown is. So that just knocks it back a bit because it was obviously really bright before. Um, so with the Null and Oil, rather than actually just coating the entire model because that would just make it too dark, what I do is just apply it just in the recesses. Uh, that kind of saves me a bit of a hassle. So with uh, Games Workshop um, techniques, what they always tell you to do is do say like a base coat, then do a wash, and then you kind of repaint the base coats again. Um, but actually by doing it this way, what I've done is just by doing it in the recesses means I don't need to do that second um, layer. There might be some other kind of technical reason why they do too. And it might actually brighten my model up more if I was to do it, but in terms of speed, this is this is the reason why I've done it. Um, so for example, on the backpack, you can see it's just in the recesses while the uh, main brown still, you know, quite brown. It's not been dulled too much. Um, so that's it for the washes. Uh, what I've still got left is the highlights and a few little uh, detail colors. So just on the collar, just there, there's like a red tag. Uh, and then on the other side of the collar there's a little skull, so that's going to be um, in white. And then things like the eagle on the helmet and on his chest plate, that still needs to get highlighted with um, lead belcher. And then I'll do um, kind of edge highlighting on the metal as well. Uh, and what I found, I've done some edge highlighting before on the coat uh, using like Dawnstone Grey. Um, and it just seems a bit unrealistic because coats, because it's like a fabric material, it shouldn't really have too much in the way of highlighting because it's obviously quite a dull matte material to begin with, whereas things like the metal are obviously a lot shinier and going to have a, like a higher reflective surface. So, and it's also a bit of a quick and easy technique and it does mean if I ever want to go back and add in that extra detail to make it a little bit more on tabletop standard, then I can do. Um, but for now, um, I'm just going to do the metallic highlights and when I do that I'll also do a bit of battle damage as well because uh, on some of the models that like, you can just see like just on that bottom panel and on the top of his chest it's got some battle damage already built into the, the casting of the model so I'm just going to highlight that with um, some lead belcher and then again with the mask so I've got that. Uh, then the final detail will be is like a gold colour, so that is um, like kind of a, the trim, uh, like the rim section of his uh, gas mask, and then the, uh, the rim of the eye sockets, uh, and then kind of buttons along the coat in various places, like there. That's just all going to get um, added with a t little touch of gold. And what that's going to do is it's just going to bring the model to life because the moment it does look really dark, and I kind of wanted to, it's one of the reasons why I did the washes first and then added on the, the extra colour because this extra colour is going to have a little bit of a wash in on those areas as well. I just wanted to show you how you go from this stage where it doesn't look that great to the next stage where it will look like a kind of finished model obviously minus the arm um, and it really will make all the difference to the model. Um, so I'll get on with painting and um, then get back to you.